Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith. I'm a product manager here at Oracle. I've been invited by Helen, your colleague at Temple, to talk uh, Oracle SQL Developer tips and tricks. You can find my contact information here on the screen. If you email me, don't forget the .d, because there are more than a few of us Jeff Smiths at Oracle. If you like to do the Twitters, um, pretty much everywhere you find me online. Um, my pseudonym, I guess, is at that Jeff Smith. So I try to be consistent that way. The screenshot here, that's my alma mater. Some of you may know where that is, especially if any of you are from Pitt. I won't make any Pitt jokes. I don't need to, you know what I'm thinking if I'm a West Virginia guy. I will not take it personally if you don't like me either. That's just how it is. So a little bit of uh, advertising. Uh, Helen, do you want to remind folks what they're going to miss out on if they don't sign up? Sure. Um, so registration for the PA Bug Conference ends fairly soon. Um, this year we've added an, a, an additional track for analytics and reporting. Also a session on Sunday. Um, that's a pre-conference workshop on a Lucian Solution Manager, uh, an installation workshop. <coughs> Excuse me, that's gonna be one to five on Sunday. Um, and hopefully we'll see some of you there. Uh, try to mute yourselves if you can. Otherwise, I will just mute everyone periodically. Okay. So a little bit about me, just because. Oh. Did I go? I think, you, oh, I think you're going to talk about me first. No, oh, you go first. <laughs> so I've been working at Temple since uh, 1997. I started out as a mainframe COBOL programmer, and uh, in around 2011, we went live with Lucian's ERP system that you all use. Um, then I, my skill set changed to using Oracle SQL, uh, to writing SQL, PL SQL, and using SQL Developer as my tool of preference. And I met Jeff uh, through, initially I was Google, Googling how to do something, came across his website, um, started emailing him questions, and I emailed him so often that there started to be some name recognition, and I logged into one of his webinars one day, and he said, wait, are you the same Helen Sanders that just emailed me three hours ago. So uh, yeah, I stalked him until he be became friends. <laughs> and we actually finally got to meet face to face at, uh, at the ODTUG K-Scope 15 conference a couple of years ago. Actually, four, yeah, for 15. So. And um, I don't want to say how long I've been doing Oracle, since Oracle 734. I guess, if you know the database version numbers. But I've taken this weird professional track. My specialty is database development and administration tools. So I've been working with vendors to build software to make working with databases and programming with databases easier. And this has made me somewhat of a productivity control freak. So a lot of my tips and tricks are going to show you how to save time when you're working with um, the database. So I'll normally do this session. We have uh, slides to keep me on track. Uh, I'll show this slide in a very static plain Jane form and then I'll alt tab into the tool and do it live. And we usually take questions as we go. I only see about 60 people on. So if you wanna unmute yourself and ask a question, feel free. We don't have the 100 plus. Sometimes that gets a little chaotic. Or you can send the question over the chat too. And uh, we'll circle back. These slides are available online. I'll show you how to go get those. Actually, I'll show you that right now. If you go to SlideShare, or if you just Google, I don't know if it's gonna come up because I just added these, but if you Google SlideShare and SQL Developer, you should find my SlideShare channel and all of the slides are up there. On my blog, I've got 
um, on my website, because really every webinar is about getting people to your website, right? Um, I have posts that go into great detail and some of those include video on how to do a lot of these things. So if you're looking for additional info, I'll fill you up with resources where to go find all of that at the end. So the tool that we're talking about today is called Oracle SQL Developer. It's included with your database license. For any end user, um, it's practically, or for all intents and purposes, it is free. The only time licensing comes into play is if uh, someone at your school wants to log a service request um, with my Oracle support. It just requires that the database, that you have at least one database uh, on a contract with support and you can log bugs and enhance some requests on SQL Developer just like you would um, on the database itself with Oracle. SQL Developer is a Java application, which really doesn't mean anything to the end user, except that it will look and behave and operate basically the same across any operating system that supports Java. For 91 to 92% of you, that's always gonna be on a um, Windows machine. And I'm demoing this on a Windows 7 laptop, but I also have a MacBook at home and I use SQL Developer on it a lot and this runs just fine on Macs. And if you're in an environment where you're on a Linux desktop or server or Unix and it's got Java on it, you can run SQL Developer on that as well. Lots and lots of people around the world are using SQL Developer. If you ever uh, needed to move, go to a completely different school or campus, there's a good chance your colleagues are using SQL Developer there as well. So what is SQL Developer? For most folks, it's a worksheet where you can type in queries and get results back in something that looks like a spreadsheet. And then to be able to click around the contents of the database to see what's what and to interact with a table, a view, a stored procedure without writing a lot of code. So that's 90% of the use case for most people. We go a lot deeper than that. And we're kind of a Swiss army knife, I guess, um, for the database, but it has an ad hoc reporting feature. So if you find yourself, you know, running the same queries for Helen every Monday morning, you could you know, create a series of reports for Helen and just open those and run those for her or send her those and she could run them herself. If you never need to build something new, like if you want to extend um, the banner feature set, maybe build some new tables um, to, to handle something it doesn't do out of the box. We have a complete design solution built into SQL Developer. So if you're ever used a modeling tool in the database world, it, it's uh, it would be very similar to any of those experiences. If we have any DBAs on the call, we have a complete DBA solution inside SQL Developer so you can manage things like security and storage and performance and backup recovery. Um, what else have we got there? Database settings. I'm not gonna talk too much about that today, but if anyone wants to see any of those things, um, feel free to uh, chime in. I know none of you are worrying about third-party migrations, but if you ever uh, needed to migrate something from like MySQL or Teradata or SQL Server or DB2, SQL Developer will do that. If we have any uh, developers out there that are working with REST as a way to access things and uh, deliver um, and post information to your apps and websites from the database, uh, SQL Developer has a complete interface to Oracle REST data services. I don't want to get too much into the weeds on that, but if you have questions on that, I'm more than happy to share that as well. And our team has also built a new command line interface to the database uh, to supplement what you have already with SQL Plus. So if you're using something like SQL Plus and would like something a little bit more new and modern from the SQL developer family, um, we have that as well. So I've got at least one request to see the DBA module. I will find a way to work that in, no problem. I have just a couple more boring slides before we get to the fun stuff. So hopefully you're using one of these versions today, and hopefully you're using one of these versions from you know at least 2013 and onward, something with the four in the version number. Upgrades are very easy. It's not really an upgrade, actually. You go to Oracle Technology Network or you go to wherever um, 
your school has set up to install or grab software from. It's a zip file. You just unzip it to a new directory and run it. And when you run that for the first time, it says, hey, you've already got SQL Developer over here. Do you want us to copy over your settings and connections and SQL history and all that good stuff? And you can say yes or no to that. And you're up and running with the new version. We have uh, version 4.2 in beta right now, and I'm actually going to be using that for the demo for today. I won't be demoing uh, beta features per se, and if I show a feature uh, that you're not used to and don't recognize, feel free to ask me uh, what version you need to use that, and I'll, I'll try to remember what that is. But in general, I'll just assume you're on version 4.1 because that's the latest and greatest. Yeah. Okay. So that jumps in us into the to the fun stuff. And Helen, your name's on the slide. Do you want to talk through this? Yeah. So um, I, don't, I think this actually started in 4.0, the ability to organize your connections. Um, create. So I've created folders for each of my um, uh, users and the schemas. And as you can see, it just is a really nice way to organize. All your connections because sometimes you end up with you know especially the dbas end up with 500 connections um on the right there it shows how to colorize your user accounts you just right click on it and say color pick a color so to get started with that no one's going to have a folder out of the box you can right click on one or more connections and say add to a folder i don't have any so i'll just create a new one called demo and now that's folded up in there so if for some weird reason as a developer you have access to prod and you never want to go into prod, you can hide those in a weird folder so you don't accidentally get in there. Um, and if you go in there frequently, but you just need a visual reminder when you're looking at the properties of a connection, there is this connection caller that you can set. And when you set that caller, it uses that same color scheme in a couple different places. You'll see it in the connection name text. You'll see it in any window in the tool that has that connection established, reinforced there. The connection callers are new for four. The connection folders themselves, I think, have been there for a long time. So if you're in a version where you don't see either of those things, that's, again, another reason to upgrade. So I have set my editor preferences for my um my eyesight, I made my fonts bigger, and I got rid of this, I used the sans serif type because it's just easier for me to read. Um, oh, by, by the way, all the tips that I'm showing you, I've all learned from Jeff's uh, website and his tips and tricks past webinars. So it's really all attributed to him. <laughs> this is one of the preferences I recommend everyone take a look at first because we ship with this really obnoxiously bad font. And the best reason I can come up with why we ship with this font is because we know it'll be on everyone's machine. So I guess we go with the least offensive. Um, this list will show any font available on your machine. Maybe a fixed width font if you're doing a lot of like explain plan or SQL plus reports so that the text lines up might be the way to go. And another thing you can do on database, and there's something in here called, um, actually, where is that? It's not database, it's under code editor. PL SQL syntax callers. All this text highlighting can be completely configured. So if you want um, a reserved word like select to be in purple and lowercase, this is where you would configure that. On my Mac, which is my personal machine, I don't use this blue and black text on white. I go with a, um, I go with a version of this, which is more old school, I guess, green screen on black. And you can tweak any of these elements that you want. If you go crazy and screw it up, you can always reset it to the, uh, to the defaults. But definitely pick a font. You're going to be looking at code um, a lot. And something to be aware of, this code font also affects the results in a grid and when you're browsing objects.
so when I run this query, um, the font used, oops, oh, it's disabled, that's no good. Live demos are where these calls get fun. So the font in this grid is that same font that we set up here in the editor font. If you're ever looking at data that has an unusual character in it um, and it's not displaying, 99 times out of 100, it's because you have a font selected that does not support that character. Okay. I should have two versions of this slide. I should have one that says, I will stop making typos in my screenshots. So everyone starts in the Oracle space learning how to write a query. And they probably write something like this, select star from one of the demo schemas we ship with HR, which stands for human resources. Surprise, surprise. So a couple tips here, and these are slightly newer features. There are two little grammar squiggles um, that the parser in, in the tool has seen and gone, hey, there's more info here. So if you put your mouse over either of these squiggles, you'll, you'll be given um, suggestions. So the reason I don't like select star from queries, I could actually do an entire talk on just this, but 99 times out of 100, you don't actually need every column. You should only ask for the columns that you want. And more importantly, if you're ever writing code directly into your application or report, if you use a select star from, your report or your application will eventually break because at some point someone will add a column or rebuild the table and the column order will be different and the assumptions you've made on those columns will no longer be valid. Um, however, I'm lazy and I like to do things the quick way, so I still use select star from. But what I can do here is I've actually click on this text it'll dynamically replace the select star from with the full column list. Um, and then I could always tweak things out that I don't want. Um, we also have this thing called the query builder, which is a more visual way of writing queries. And if you're not uh, afraid of using the mouse too much, you could come in here and just toggle off um, the things you don't want to see in your report. As I make these changes, the text in this worksheet is updated automatically to reflect that. The other thing you can do is you can ask the editor for help. So uh, if I hit control space bar, it'll just pull up a list um, of things that, that come in. And I think Helen has a slide in here that I inserted. Yeah, so here's Helen's tip if you want to um, talk that one through. Yeah, so from the tree view, you can just drag the table name or view name or whatever it is, your, whatever object it is you want to look at, um, drag it over to the query, to the, sorry, editor window worksheet. And I have my, my default to prompt me um, for every, what I want to do every time I drag an object over. Um, in this case, I'm saying build the select statement for me. So I drag the suggestion table over. So let me show oh. that and we'll show the other one too. Now Jeff doesn't have access to our banner tables, obviously. So he's not, well, not going to drag suggestion. If I did, I wouldn't tell Helen. <laughs> So if you do just the name, this is useful when you have a really pain in the butt name to type. Um, and it's more useful if you do it with columns, which we'll show in a second, but she's talking about this select individual. So this will bring that over. And you can also do this with columns. So, if, yeah, so here I've highlighted just the columns that I want. And if you drag, drag while they're highlighted, if you just drag that over, you get just those columns the entire table. Now where this gets fun, um, if you want salary first, because that's what everyone wants to see first, you click salary first, then you click last name, then you click first name, then you click hire date, and finally you click manager ID, so you know who to send that nasty email to, and then you drag and drop this over 
And you can see it's painting the cursor where I move the mouse, that's telling it where it's gonna drop. And I say object name. By the way, if you're always doing the same thing over and over again, just uncheck this prompt every time and it'll default to that. And these options are also stored in the preferences in case you ever need to change it back. Oh, that's great, did we find a bug? No, okay, so uh, salary, last name, first name, hire date, manager ID. So it observed that click order um, when I put it in there. So you have like four different ways to avoid select star froms. One last thing, um, I'm assuming Banner has views and lots of views and probably views that build on top of views. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And people might go, why is this so slow? <laughs> it's just a simple select star from. So here is a second little squiggly line and you're not gonna see this until you're on 12, Oracle 12C. And uh, I know some of you are piloting 12C or already gone to 12C or thinking about going to 12C. Eventually everyone will be on 12C. But when you get there, SQL Developer will see that and it's gonna take advantage of this new feature where we show you not what you've got to run, but what the database is actually gonna run when you ask for that query. So when I click this and then I format it, which is control F7, what I actually have or what I'm actually asking the database to do is run this 415 line query. So if you've ever wondered, hey, what is this? Um, I don't know, Helen, give us some view and banner, but if you ever wanted to say, what's this view really doing? Yeah. Use this trick. Of course, you can undo this. You can undo the format and you can undo the replace. So Jeff, uh, we have a question. Oh, cool. These are so much easier when I have a, a co-presenter, keep me honest. You have version three, would like to upgrade, but have many preferences set. Do those migrate or do I need to save? So this is what I like um, about the upgrade kind of process for SQL Dev. You can put, or you should put version uh, new right beside version old and run it. And the first time version new pops up, it'll be a little dialogue that says, we have found your settings from version three, version two, version one. Would you like to pick one of those to move over? And when you say yes, it'll copy all that stuff over. And then use version new until you no longer find yourself needing to go back to version old and then you can just delete that old, that old copy off your machine. Now, if you ever need to uh, use the tool across multiple machines or multiple networks or you have an install at home and an install at work and you want to maintain your preferences across multiple machines, there's a way to make that happen too. It's a little bit too advanced for the show and tell, but we have blog, I have a blog post on that if you want to see how to do that. And yeah, if something's important, you probably should back it up. Um, so if, your school IT's department automatically backs up your um, Windows machine for you and it includes the app data folder, which it probably does. The SQL developer stuff will get um, preserved as well. So I just showed you a few things to get help for queries in our GUI, but I talked about this new command line interface too. This is the, the new command line interface for um, Oracle database. So if you ever wanna run a query here and you want help with a query predicate, you can just hit the tab key and it'll pull up a full list of columns to choose from. So I can say salary F and then automatically, and then E, it doesn't auto complete because there's two of those, but if I do EMP tab, it'll auto complete that. And I said stars are bad, so you can actually cursor back up to the star and hit tab again and just pick the ones that you want. So maybe um, state row num, hire date, uh, first name, employee ID, and then just run that and get that back. And I have an invalid relational operator. So we just, oh, <laughs> so I just make the where clause not stupid. Where salary equals, or is greater than my salary, which is 
one. And there's that query. So whether you're using our software in the cloud, on, on your desktop, in your command line interface, a lot of these features should carry across all of those spaces. Here's another Helen tip. So this, um, this is for those of us who want to know the relations between the banner tables, the parent and child relationships. The way I usually do this is, again, if, I, if I'm looking in the tree and I find a, see a table name, um, drag it over and then click the, or no, I'm sorry, highlight the table name, click the model tab. And here Jeff has done it with the query instead, I believe. So this assumes you have foreign keys, which I can't always assume will be there, but Helen tells me um, Banner's done a good job with relational integrity in the database. So you have all these tabs across the top. This is new for version four, this model page. And it might take a second the first time you click on it because it actually loads up our, our data modeling tech. Um, but you just pay that price once and then every time you click on this going forward, it should be much faster. But this will give you the data modeling perspective of the department's table. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna walk the dependency list one level up and one level down. So if a table is related to departments, it'll show that. And if departments is related to a table, it'll show that as well. So here's that diagram. So these are for looking only at this point. And if you ever wanna do anything with this diagram, move stuff around, change it, generate DDL, make a change to an object, version it, then you click this big fancy button. And that opens this set of objects in the data modeling component of the tool, and then you can go crazy there. Uh, so, what else do I want to talk about here? You could see the same information on the constraints tab. So if you're on an older version, you would just do a filter on foreign key. And this is the list of foreign key constraints on this object. So I tried to have a academic theme to this slide deck and I like playing with pictures. So let's talk about history a little bit, except we're gonna talk about the good history, not the rise and fall of our favorite civilization, but um, let's talk about your queries. So every time you run a query or a script in SQL Developer, we are recording that for you. If that freaks you out, I'll show you how to control that. If that makes you happy because you realize you can now go rescue work that you did a few weeks ago and forgot to save, Awesome. So this little animated GIF shows you how to go reach back into that history without picking up your mouse. Because you can view all of this in the, in, the, in the display as well. But I'm just using, you know, control up or down. And it's the same on um, the Mac. It's control up and down on the Mac as well. And it just goes through that list and it shows you what you've got. Uh, now, if I do control shift, it, it'll append. And this list it's reading from, if you hit F8, it'll, it'll bring it up here. So this is everything. What I like about that view, Jeff, is that I can sort by my connection and the date. Yep. So that's why I like uh, to hit Now, that. what I really like is when I'm really in a hurry to find something, I can filter across it too. So if I'm working on a specific module, like maybe I'm just working on, um, I don't know, alumni stuff, and there's a table that you wanna just see those queries, just type that object name in here. And that list will um, now be the only thing that we cycle through in the command history. So I'm doing control down, and you understand what down and up mean now. It's based on, in here, based on the last time it executed. Um, the one time I'll open up this panel is when I need to do a filter, but I'll also use it 
when I'm looking for an idea as to why my query is taking so long to run, because what we're also doing when you run these queries is we record the number of times it's executed, and we also record um, the amount of time it's taken um, since you hit the go button to the time you get results back. So it's not quite database time, it's more like end user experience time. If you're seeing this query take way longer or way shorter than it normally does, you can come here and look at the history on that query and see what the average is and see if you're above or below it. Um, in the command line interface, if you're in here, the history is here as well, and then you don't do control up or down, you just do up or down. Uh, and instead of FA, you just type history to see that full history. And if you wanna see the timing, you say history time and it prints those things with the time. So I can say history 93, it puts that in the buffer. I can run that and uh, there's that text. We do go really fast in these sessions. So um, if this is really overwhelming to you and you can't keep up with the note taking, um, having access to the, the slide deck afterwards will help and then you can um, read the different in-depth blog posts and watch the videos if, if you'd like. There's a, uh, an additional history feature we added for 4.1 where you can actually see the queries that SQL Developer itself is generating on the database when you use a feature. So if you open the log panel in 4.1, you'll see the statements item. And this is the, um, both the raw SQL that goes across the driver to the database and the bind parameters we pass along to it. So if you're ever curious as to like where SQL developer finding this information when you click on you know, a table and then go click on uh, the flashback page, you can actually see the queries that we send to the flashback data dictionary views. Or if you're seeing a screen that's not working, maybe because of privileges, you can see the, the views and the function calls we're making that you would need to grant, execute, or select privs on. Or maybe you're a developer and you want the DBA to give you access to something, you can use that screen to say, look, I need you to grant me select on V$ session so I can see my queries that are busted. Oh, and I jumped ahead of myself, but that's okay. Okay, so, um, Execution plans, let's talk about those. It's great when the optimizer comes up with a good plan. And 95% of the time, you can just write your query and worry about the data being right. And uh, uh, the optimizer does the rest. I mean, that's really why you're paying us a lot of money is to make sure that your, your data is consistent and you can get access to it very easily and quickly. But every now and then you manage to find a query that doesn't work very well at all. And this is when you might wanna have the ability to say, you know, why? What is what is the database doing? So let's talk about uh, explain plans and execution plans. Okay, so let's look at an interesting uh, data dictionary view. So let's say I'm not going to run this, but I'm going to ask the database to give me a guess as to what it's going to do, like what's the cost going to be and what are the steps? I'm going to hit this button right here. And it'll bring back the list of steps it's going to take to go what looks to be this very simple query. It's actually not simple at all. Look at all of the different um, tables it has to hit to bring this data back. And not only does it have to go hit these different tables, it has to loop through them and use a hash to join them together so we get single rows. Um, we can also see what the cardinality is. So that's a fancy term that just basically means mathematically, what do we, um, what are the number of rows that are gonna be involved in this step? So fixed table full on this object, um, there are six rows it's gonna process or it, it thinks it's gonna be six, is the more accurate way of looking at it. And since it's six, it's not freaking out about involving it with the nested loop, which is expensive. But if it said 60,000 or six million, it might use a different strategy. 
So you go through all of this and you go, yeah, okay, that should be okay. That should be fine. And you're good to go. You just run the query. But maybe this query takes a really long time to run. I'm sorry, was there a question? Nope. So let's make this a little bit longer. Let's say from... Uh, Jeff, I'm sorry, there was a question. Oh, there was, okay. How do you run from the command line? So I think maybe they're referring to the SQL CL. Oh, how do you start it? So if you're really keen on doing this command line stuff, when you download SQL Developer, the newer versions, and you go into the install directory, if you go all the way down to bin, there's a new binary in here called SQL. So you just open, oops, why did I do that? I'm all about being lazy, so this is the easiest way to know to do it. So copy here, say command cd to that directory, say SQL, send your connect string, and you should be in. Yep. You can also download that as a standalone thing, which is only about 15 megabytes, and it doesn't require an Oracle client. So if you're on a naked machine with no Oracle stuff on it at all, and you really have to get connected to the database right now, uh, you can download this. It should take about three seconds to download, extract, and, and go. Um, of course, you're not in a GUI anymore. I mean, you'll get some help, but not the really super fancy mouse clicky help. And what version of Oracle and what version of SQL Developer do we need to make it happen? So if you want this uh, included, you need to be on version 4.1. Before 4.1, I don't think we um, included it. So I think he's also got a question about editing stuff. Uh, yeah, so we still have the edit command, uh, which is in here somewhere. We put them in alphabetical order for some stupid reason. It makes it hard for me to find. But the nice thing is you don't have to use the edit command because we have an editor built into the tool itself. So I can say select one, comma two, comma three, four, comma five, comma six. From dual, or one equals one, fetch first one rows only. If I want to edit this, I can simply use the arrow keys to go up into the buffer and change any of these lines and run it. Um, no rows fetch. So I want to change that. I just use the up arrow key. It's in the history. I come in here, change my predicate, say R. And there's, there's my data. So would this prevent us from having to log into, like I usually have my SQL developer window open to build my queries and then I log into SQL plus in a separate window. Does this, pre will, I, will I not have to do that anymore? Uh, this is a alternative to SQL plus is basically what it is. It's, it's everything SQL plus is with a lot of new fancy stuff included, which I've shown some of you um, that, like the help with the object names, the history, the built-in editor. Um, and I have a whole hour session we can do on just this stuff. But um, if you really like using, you know, like the low lightweight kind of naked feel in the command line, this is a really great tool because we take all the best things people like from SQL developer and we, married it with SQL plus. Um, all of the new commands we've added above what you're used to in SQL plus are here highlighted in the help. So, you know, there's a script, there's a command in here called DDL. So I can say DDL HR employees and we'll go generate the SQL script to go build the employees table for you. And it does take a while to run. And then while that's running, we had another question of what kind of permissions do you need to run this? You just need um, the same permissions you'd have otherwise. So you need uh, read, write, execute on the files. And in the database, you need uh, the connect privilege to get in. And then whatever else you wanted to do 
work wise as you would have. And you should be able to use the same Oracle database user that you use in SQL Developer to um, to use this tool. And is that the same case with the explain plans? So for explain plans, what you need to um, to do this. Uh, I think you get out of the box for your user the ability to generate a plan. What you might not get out of the box um, is the ability to access something called a plan table, which is where these plans are stored. Um, so you would just need to ask your DBA for access to the plan table. I don't want to get into the weeds too much, but um, There's something called an explain plan, and then there's also something called uh, just the plan. So an explain plan means you're asking the database to guess or to, to show you what the plan could be for your query. If the query is already run and it's in, the, it's in memory in the data dictionary, or if it's cached, I guess is the better way of saying it, you can click on this little drop down button here and we'll show you the plans that are, in, that are known to the database for this text. And if I click that, it'll open up that cached plan now. So what you need there is access to the V$ SQL plan data dictionary view. These plans could be, the way the plans actually run in the database compared to what you get when you do an explain plan can be wildly different. Um, and you can see if there are differences, I can, I can do a compare. And in this case, the differences are wildly different. We also have this thing called a trace, or it's actually a SQL plus feature called auto trace, set trace on, but our GUI version is kind of nice too. So what we do here is we run the query, and instead of showing you the results of the query, we show you the plan for that query, and we also show you the session statistics that were generated just for that query. So you can see how much CPU was used, how many sorts happened, how many physical reads happened, and this can give you insight as to what's taken so long as well. And it's a lot easier than actually doing a full session trace, which most developers won't have the access to do anyway. Now, if you uh, are at a site that has licensed in the database something called the tuning pack, and if you don't know the answer to that, don't use this feature, go ask your DBA. You can also ask the database to help you tune your query for you. Helen's giving me a 15 minute warning. So let's get rocking and rolling. Um, you know, using uh, the mouse to do everything in a GUI is very tempting, but it can also slow you down. So, um, if you want to go super fast, you can put the put that mouse down. And this is me trying to make a cute joke at Temple's expense. All right, so if you want to get, <laughs> was it funny? Thanks for pretending. Um, if you want to get to an object over here in the tree, a lot of people just come over here into the tree and be like, oh, okay, it's in here, it's in here, it's in here, and they'll double click on it. But if, you're, if you have code in your worksheet, you can actually click into your, to your objects. So I'm using the control key, a mouse hovering over this text, and I'm clicking. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Yes, it does. Uh, it's employees, it wasn't lying. Yeah, so it just opens that object for me. And I use this trick, I use this feature all the time. Um, um, so if you wanna see it again, let's do it slow-mo. H-R-E-M, I'm gonna ask for help. I'm gonna do this view instead. I wanna go see what's wrong with this view. So I'm gonna take the control key, hold it down, take my mouse, hover it over this text, click that link, and let it open that view for me. And I can see my errors. Key region ID isn't good. Um, so this will print the SQL behind the view, and then I can copy that to the worksheet, and then I can go fix it. Um, another thing, people love sending data to Excel, which I hate, but I realize it has to happen, so I'm not going to preach on that. Let me show you a few tricks on uh, 
these grids. So most folks learn this first. They know they can right click on a grid and say export and then walk through this wizard to get their data out. And I, I tried to figure out just how many clicks that takes. It's something like seven or eight clicks to go from that grid to that uh, text delimited stuff on the right. You can do this all in one go with no clicks at all. In SQL Developer, you can add this comment to your code. And run this as a script, and it just prints it back immediately in that format. And then can we export that to a file? What you would do, if you're really lazy like me, uh, what is that? Users, JD Smith, documents, peeps, but I want JSON. JSON, set head off, set page size 100, no, 200, spool off. So I'm gonna do this now. So I have this JSON document of all these employees, but it's also written this file to here. Or I could just click the save button down here, or you could do what you're already doing anyway and just copy and paste it. But at least you're copying and pasted the formatted data instead of the raw grid itself. Jeff, you know if there are um, row limits on doing that, doing it this way? So if I have a million records, will it also spool those million records out for me? It should always spool the million records out. What it might not do is actually print them to the screen because that gets expensive. Um, So there's a setting in here somewhere. Oh, where is that? We're running out of time. On the worksheet page, there's a setting in here to say, just print 5,000 rows to the screen. So you should hit that limit, but the spool shouldn't let, it should continue to spool that data out to that file. Yep. If you're doing millions of rows anyway, like question what it is that you're doing because there's probably an even better way to do it. Um, like millions of records, I would create a SQL loader session and have it generate the SQL loader files just so it's fast, fast, fast. And this works in the command line bits as well. Surprise. Um, we're at 12, I've got 10 minutes left. So. A lot of folks just don't like the tree. So I'm gonna show you a few tricks for this connection tree to make it more uh, palatable and then give you some alternatives to it completely. And some of these tricks, uh, Helen has reminded me of. So the first thing you can do is if you have 1500 connections, start to maintain and organize them by connections folders. So again, this is a demo feature for me too. So right click, add the folder, demo and now I can hide it and I should probably create folders for these called sys do not do not touch. So I've got those two. Now the other thing you can do is actually trim this tree down so you don't have everything under God's green, God's blue sky. Um, to get in the way. I mean, if you're just looking at tables, views, and stored procedures, you don't need to see anything else. So in the preferences, you can go to, on the database page, there's a new item here called navigation filter, so that you do need version four for this, and you can just start turning things off on this list. I mean, you could turn everything off but tables and views if you wanted to. You can also filter um, here. So by default, we show you every user. And I know Banner uses database accounts for logins, which is fine. Um, lots of applications do that. But you don't ever 
go in here and browse the contents of those logins because they're not true schemas. They don't actually own objects. So you could go two ways here. You could apply a filter on this list and say, um, don't show me anything that has an object count of zero. Now this is expensive because what it's going to do is for every single schema in your database, and if you have 10,000 users, this could take a while, it's going to say, does this user own anything? And if not, don't show it. The faster way is to probably say, only show me schemas that are equal to um, the application users that you want to um, browse. So you basically just create a list here of the things that you want to see. So that's a lot less drilling and clicking. All that said and done, you might still hate the tree. So you can also right click on the connection and ask for a schema browser. This guy right here. And that gives you, instead of a tree to browse, it gives you a collection of drop downs. So it's just a different navigational aid. Now, when I want to go super fast, I don't use any of these things. Again, I do that control click or I do a search. Um, I'm looking for something in my database called, uh, I don't know, something fun. I'm just going to do a search. That should have worked. I hate it when demos don't work. Hit the binoculars button and just go find everything. And I needed to go into columns too and wildcard it. Uh, no, didn't find anything. Well, we'll just do something nice, I guess. There we go. So here's everything in the data dictionary that starts with EMP goes across all the schemas. I could say just the schemas that I care about. All of the object types, I could say just the ones I care about. I could also go into source code, which is gonna be expensive, but we'll do that too. So this is gonna look through all the PL SQL looking for imp text. So I have those here now. So these little hits are highlighted. So here's a reference to impno for this package called HTML DB item. And if I click on this, it'll open that object. Um, and then I can use this in here to go in there and find that. And I'll assume that we would only see the results of objects we have permissions for. You can only see what the data dictionary thinks you can see. So, um, you might be able to see more than the DBA thinks you should be able to see. And you might be able to see stuff that you can see, but not actually do stuff with it. But yeah, you're going to be limited to what um, comes back when we go across things like all objects, all views, all source. Uh, so what do we do? Yeah, so control click we showed. I didn't show describe, but you can open up a little mini um, editor for an object. Um, with the describe feature that looks like this. Shift F4 will open up a little mini window. No, where is that? It's in here. I hate, here we go. So instead of select star from, because remember we said that sucks, brewery style, first head rating, drag and drop. There's that list. And then if I want to go look at my uh, indexes, um, while I write, oh man, I don't have any indexes. That's not good. Um, I would probably go open this object and start building my indexes. And then the find, you can use the big binoculars button. If you don't have the binoculars button on your main toolbar, it's because you're on an older version, but uh, the search is still in there. You would just go to view, find DB object, and that opens the search panel. 
three minutes left, man. Uh, I'm gonna skip over, well, we basically just showed this, yep. And I stole Helen's tips for my own. Sorry, Helen. But here she is showing the, um, hiding the schemas to just the banner application schemas you would care about. Saturn looks fun. Does it have rings, maybe? Oh, uh, someone's reminding me of DBA module. So yeah, let me make sure I'm not losing anything crazy in here. I was gonna skip the reports anyway. Yep, okay. So let me show you DBA module. We hide it in this thing called view DBA. It's not really a module. Um, everything in here is free. There's no extra download or thing you have to turn on. Everything just ships included. Um, so I'm gonna combine a couple of different tricks so I can fit it all here in the three minutes and see how fast I can do it. Um, I wanna see a user and their privileges and then I wanna see one of their tables and I wanna see the definition of the table and the data of its table all on one screen. So let's do that. We're gonna do HR because that's boring and everyone has it. So there's a page under here called security and there's a page called users. And HR is in here. Now if I double click, it opens the editor here just for that user. And I can see what their sys and object privs are. Uh, we don't have any object privs, that's weird. So let's go give them one. Grant select on um, and then yep. So if you want to see uh, sysprivs and object privs on the same page, here's a trick. Grab this little widget here and drag it down. Helps if you get it, yep. And then click which one you wanna see. Now, I also wanna see their table uh, employees. So that's a schema object. I have to come back up here to get to that. And I wanna see it the same time as their other stuff, but it went away. I mean, it's still here. Oh no, I lost it. So let's go back and do that again. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin this object so that it does not go away when I do this. And then I'm gonna drag this down again. And we're gonna click on object privs and sys privs. Now I really want to see these two things at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for a new set of these doc tabs, document tabs. And now I got it. So I've got my employees table here and I've got the privileges for the user that owns that table here. Now I might want to see not just the data, I'm sorry, the columns, I might want to see the model and the data too. So I can do this split again. I'm gonna do the split again, except now I'm gonna drag the one on the bottom over and I'm gonna ask for the model. And at this point, I might wanna hide the connection panel too so I can save some screen real estate. We are one minute over, but I hope this has been useful. Since we started three minutes late, early, started three minutes late, let's run two minutes late too. Um, and I'll end the recording at that point and then everyone can unmute and they can ask all the questions they want. And if you have to go back to your real job, um, feel free to leave. Um, the recording will go up later today and Helen has your contact info. She'll show you how to get that. Thanks everyone for your time. Go Owls, go Panthers, go whatever school you work at. Even if you don't have a team, go you, you. So, Jeff, just a quick question while you're doing this. We had, yep. um, people had sent you a couple questions ahead of time too. I don't know if you'll be able to get to them today or would you be able to? Yes. Individually? Yeah, I was supposed to have those pasted in here and I forgot. Um, don't have them in here anymore. 
someone asked about different modules. So um, there's the data modeling bit. You get to that from here, view data modeler browser. Someone asked about um, DBA. You get to that also from view, view DBA. I mean, we also have modules for data miner if you've licensed that. Really, really cool stuff. Um, this new thing in 12C called analytic views is in here. The change management or the lifecycle management pack in Oracle is here. So we have tons and tons and tons of um, plugins and, and modules uh, for SQL Dev. There was another question about using the Insight feature to get help with packages uh, instead of tables. So um, you can do that. Uh, begin DBMS output, and then this should work. Couldn't get it to work the other day. The Insight feature is supposed to work here too, but I'm on a beta version, so I'm gonna pretend it's the beta version that broke. But what that should look like when you want help on the Insight with the, um, come on. Crud, let's see here. Sys DBMS output put line. It's supposed to print up a list. Let me do a local a local schema object here. Add job history. I'm going to, there we go. So it brings up a list of the um, parameters we need. So there's the help for that. All right. Uh, I'm not going to unmute everyone's line, but you can unmute yourself. And if you didn't join the audio, this is your last chance to ask a question via the chat. And if you want the deck, Slide Deck, it's on Slide Share, which is owned by LinkedIn, which is owned by Microsoft. <laughs> um, but the, the, all the slides are here. And the, um, all my tips and tricks are on my website, thatjeffsmith.com. I'll uh, share all the, the links in a thank you message. So someone's asking about docking windows. Um, you can dock stuff all over the place. Just kind of pick it up and it'll kind of draw on the screen where it's gonna go. You can also do crazy stuff like um, float the panel directly off the UI and um, drag it over to your secondary monitor. So if you have like three monitors all matrix style, you know, you can have a full page editor, or a full page table, all on multiple monitors. Um, and then when you want to bring it back, you can right click and say um, dock. And if you really screw up your display, you can always come into here to um, window and say reset windows to factory settings. That doesn't reset uh, Microsoft Windows to factory settings. It resets your SQL developer desktop to uh, factory settings. All right, 15 second warning if you have a question. Let's go. Thanks everyone for your time. This is what I look like if you're morbidly curious. Um, I probably have even less hair now. Uh, Jeff.d.smith at oracle.com is my email. And tweet me at, at that Jeff Smith, or you can just send your questions to Helen, and Helen will send them to me. Because now I'm screwed, and I can never ignore her questions <laughs> ever again. Thank you so much, Jeff, and thanks to uh, the PA Bug folks for helping organize this. Um, I really appreciate it, and it looks like we got a lot of uh, great comments. People are happy with us today, so thank you, everybody.